In this video, we're going to be talking about haloalkanes and alcohols, which are more specific functional groups that are hydrocarbons. So we'll start by talking about haloalkanes, and then we'll cover alcohols, and then we'll talk about the types of bonding between them. So we'll start with a quick refresher. We know carbon has four valence electrons, which you can see here in red, and these are four bonding sites. And hydrogen has one valence electron, which you can see here in yellow, so this has one bonding site. The covalent or electrostatic attraction is how the carbon and hydrogens are bonded to each other. We know hydrogens have to have two electrons in their first shell and carbons have to have eight electrons for them to both be stable. So you can see these are both stable. This is important to know because from this foundation we're going to build and learn from here. So we'll start by looking at the periodic table. You can see in group 17 here, these are our halogens. So haloalkanes are an alkane structure which has a halogen bonded to it. So we know here with our carbon we've got four bonding sites and we can replace one of the hydrogens with a halogen. So here we've put in a fluorine. We know this is covalent bonding because of the alkane structure which is also electrostatic attraction because it's to do with the electrons and how they're sharing their charges. So now we'll talk about the halogens again and we'll take a closer look at fluorine. This is fluorine here. Its mass number is 19, which is the number of neutrons plus the number of protons. Its atomic number is 9, which is the number of protons. We know that fluorine also has 9 electrons because it has no overall net charge. So all the positive protons are balanced by negative electrons. So as we know from our first basics video, the maximum number of electrons in the first shell is 2, which you can see fluorine has 2 in the inner ring up the top, so that is stable. And the maximum number of electrons in the second shell is eight. So you can see it's got one electron up the top in the second shell, two on each side and two at the bottom. So this isn't stable because there's only seven where we need to have eight. So if we go back to our simple alkane and we replace one of the hydrogens with a fluorine, we can see how that interacts. So we know fluorine has seven valence electrons and there's only one bonding site to get this back up to eight electrons. So you can see now the carbon and the fluorine both have eight electrons around it. So these are both happy and stable. This is important to know because they'll often ask how haloalkanes or how halogens are bonded to alkanes to make them a haloalkane. Now we'll look at naming them. So anything with a fluorine atom in it is going to be fluoro something. Chlorine is chloro. Bromine is bromo and iodine is iodo. So we'll have a go at naming this structure here. The first step that we always do when we name a carbon structure is count the number of carbons. So you can see here we've got five carbons, so we know this is going to be pentane because it's C's and H's. But you can also see we've got this bromine here, and we just said that the bromine prefix was bromo. You can see that the bromine is attached to the third carbon, so we put a three in front of the bromo. So this structure is called 3-bromopentane. As you can see in the condensed structural formula, now we'll try this structure. So again, we start by numbering our carbons. You can see we've got five, so we know this is pentane. And you can see we've got two iodines, so it's gonna be iodo. Now we'll look at how we go about naming two iodines. So we can see one of the iodines is attached to the first carbon, and the other iodine is attached to the fourth carbon. So we go 1,4-iodopentane, and that's how we go about naming two haloalkanes in the same chain. Now this one's a little bit harder. You can see we've got our chlorine, and it's attached to the fifth carbon. However, chemists like to make everything as simple as they can, so they want us to name our carbon atoms so that the number in front of the chloro is the smallest number possible. So for this, we're going to take away all our numbering, and we're going to flip the numbers, so that is the first carbon. Now we'll go about naming our chain just like we normally do. So you can see we've got five carbons, so it's going to be pentane. Our chlorine is there, so we've got chloro. But now our chlorine is attached to the first carbon instead of the fifth. So this is one chloropentane. It's really important to remember this numbering system because it's the same with all hydrocarbons. So it'll be the same with alcohols. And later on in level two, when you get to other functional groups, this concept is still remaining. So now we'll look at alcohols. So this is a refresher of our simple hydrocarbon, and we can replace one of the hydrogens with a hydroxyl, which is an OH. 
So the oxygen has seven valence electrons. So the oxygen has six valence electrons plus one from the hydrogen. So altogether, the hydroxyl group has seven valence electrons, which comes in, and you can see now we've got eight on each side. So there's eight electrons in the second shell of the carbon and eight electrons around the second shell of the hydroxyl group. So just like our halo alkane, this works out because we've got seven valence electrons coming in with that one bonding site on the hydroxyl, which can replace a hydrogen bonded to carbon. So again, this is important to remember, as examiners will often ask how you bond alcohols. So now we'll go about naming them. So as always, we count the number of carbons. So we've got five, so we know it's going to be pentan something. We can see we've got a hydroxyl group. So that's going to be an ol, and it's ol like alcohol. And our hydroxyl is attached to the third carbon. So that's going to put a 3 in front of the ol. This structure is called pentan 3 ol. Now we'll look at the next one. So again, we've got five carbons in our structure. So pentan, we've got a hydroxyl group, so an ol, and it's attached to the first carbon, so this is 1 ol. What you might note in our condensed structural formula is that our hydroxyl group is on the left hand side, whereas in our structural formula, the hydroxyl is on our right hand side. So because our condensed structural formula is reading from the first carbon to the second carbon, we're going to read all of the atoms attached to the first carbon, which are our two hydrogens and our hydroxyl, and then we'll go to the second carbon, and then the third, and then the fourth, and then the fifth. So the condensed structural formula is read from left to right, from first carbon to last carbon. So take note of that. This one's a little bit trickier, because our hydroxyl is attached to our fourth carbon. And as we said before, with the halo alkanes, chemists like to keep it really simple when naming our hydrocarbons. So for this, we can see that we can rename all of the carbons so that there's a smaller number in front of the functional group. So we'll rename all of these carbons, and then we'll go about naming it again. So you can see we've got five carbons in the chain. So pentan, we've got our hydroxyl group, so we've got ol, and it's now attached to the second carbon instead of the fourth, so it's going to be pentan 2 O. Again, this is really important to note because examiners will pull you up on this. So now we'll go through a quick summary and compare and contrast haloalkanes and alcohols. So haloalkanes have halogens bonded to the alkane structure, and halogens have seven valence electrons and one bonding site. We know carbon has four valence electrons and four bonding sites, and this is what it looks like here. So you can see the two rings are green because both the carbon and the fluorine have eight electrons around the second shell, so these are fully stable. With hydroxyls, we know there's seven valence electrons and one bonding site. So this is very similar, and in fact exactly the same, as the halogens. And we know carbon's the same, so this picture is going to look very similar to the haloalkane. Again, we can see the two rings are green, because both carbon and the hydroxyl have eight electrons in their second energy shell. Lastly, we're going to talk about functional groups. So in our haloalkanes, we have halogens, and in our alcohols, we have hydroxyls. So both of these are called functional groups because they have special properties because of their unique positioning on the periodic table. So for example, halogens are very reactive as they only have to gain one electron to be stable. As we know, noble gases are the most stable elements on the periodic table because they have a full energy shell of eight electrons. Like we said before, halogens gain one electron to be fully stable. So they'll do everything they can to gain that electron and be fully stable. So this makes halogens really reactive, and it also means that haloalkanes, which have that halogen bonded to the alkane group, are very reactive as well. With hydroxyl groups, they are very flammable because they have a hydroxyl OH, which has less of an oxygen requirement for combustion. And we'll look at this further in the combustion video when it comes. Since hydroxyl groups are so flammable, this also means that alcohols are flammable. This is important to know because they'll often ask you why functional groups are different and what makes them different, also what makes them special. So for this, you need to know that the special positioning or the unique positioning on the periodic table gives them special properties which makes each of these functional groups different. So in this video, we've looked at the more sophisticated hydrocarbons. We talked about haloalkanes, 
which are just alkanes with a halogen bonded. We've looked at alcohols, which are alkanes with a hydroxyl group bonded. And we talked about functional groups and how there are special properties due to the position on the periodic table. So the exam keyword questions you should be able to answer now are recognising haloalkanes and alcohols, naming both of these, drawing both of these, and explaining functional groups and what makes them special. So that's it for this video. From now on, the videos are a bit more interesting because we start to cover concepts instead of actual rote learning. However, that's the foundation we need to start on before we go on to the other topics because we're going to be building on these basic concepts and going into further depth. So really make sure you understand all of the previous videos before going on to the next one.